Hello everyone. Hi. It's me, Giga. And Boyan. Again. From Mix Analog. <laughs> On our traditional 14th um, live Q&A webinar. Yay. Well, so, yeah, welcome back. Um, we or welcome for the first time if you haven't uh, been with us on the previous 13 webinars. Um, yeah, that's what the, the usual course of action. Um, yeah. So the way this works is uh, we'll be telling you about new things that happened since the last webinar. Uh, so it's going to be a bit of updates and a bit of forecast about what we will be doing soon. And um, in the meantime, if you guys have any questions or if you are um, if you have any questions or suggestions, just write them down in the chat. I'll read them out um, and we'll try to respond to uh, them. Just one uh, excuse. I'm just going to uh, go back uh, behind the, the computer and everything to, to stick my network cable into the device because oh, yeah, the, the yeah, Wi-Fi yeah. Um, usually The Wi-Fi here is quite terrible for streaming, so we need to go on cable. It'll take... Uh, a few seconds. Uh, hello, Johnny, Philip, and Charaka. Hello, hello, everyone. It's good to have you around. Some of you I know from before, from previous webinars. Thank you for sticking around. All right, and uh -huh. we're back. I hope we we won't go missing. Uh, <laughs> Well, ho hopefully it'll fail over. Yeah, my hope. Anyway, um, so what's uh, new? Yeah, it's the, it's always something new going on. Yeah, we, <laughs> we, we can't um, stay put. Yeah. Um, so what should we start with? Let's start with hardware, I think. Hardware, tape yeah. or destruction unit? Let's start with tape and then go into the destruction unit, I guess. Okay. Yeah, they're both um, saturators, but. I think the tape's going to be sooner. It's going to be done sooner, so maybe we should start with that. Yeah, I hope it's going to be done sooner. It should be. It's probably going to be done sooner. Uh, so yeah, update on tape. Um, we did a good check on, <laughs> on mechanics uh, <laughs> to adjust some of the um, tape tension arm um, springs and all that. It's an old machine, so it, it needed a bit of readjusting. Uh, we did some... Uh, resoldering because we found a couple of cold joints so we are doing a good revision of all the control and audio boards uh, because we found that that yeah, could be a problem it's very interesting this old studer i mean it's built like a tank but for some reason the electronics the soldering on the electronics seems really odd like there has there's probably some chemical problem with the solder or temperature problem when they were soldering it but I mean, whatever the problem was, when we resolder it, it like really um, sucks up all the solder. We've never seen yeah. anything like it. So it's a good idea to resolder everything, and <laughs> it's a big machine, but uh, yeah. we'll do it. It's just it'll be much more reliable mm. that way. Yeah, but uh, we got finally uh, a new pinch roller. Yeah. So the transport started working uh, to a point that. I was able to start testing the serial control interface um, and as far as it goes it's behaving quite nicely so um, mm -hmm. it's already going into record mode going to rewind mode um, I think there's some debugging left to do on uh, the lo locators so uh, out auto rewind and um, tape position readouts and all that but um, when those things work, I must say I've been like super impressed with the mechanics, because if you tell it to go back to to zero from I don't know three quarters in into the tape, it'll go like to zero. Yeah, zero it's, dot it's zero zero dot zero zero. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, the the onboard computer has a, a really nifty way of of slowing down when it's uh, re when it's getting near to the zero and then going around. Um, sometimes even going forward just so that it uh, catches exactly the spot mm -hmm. so really amazing technology I mean um, it has 
I think two separate computers inside and stuff. So really good tape machine. It sounds amazing on 15 IPS, but we've also verified that even though it doesn't have it on the front panel, it actually goes to 30. So, <laughs> so uh, maybe not in the first version, but uh, soon after the, the, the first release, um, we will add the option to switch IPS speed and uh, this one is interesting this tutor because it goes from uh, 375 to 7.5 15 and 30 so it's got yeah. a lot of speeds um, so yeah, looking maybe, forward to doing that maybe just a heads up about the planned process of um, putting this machine up um, the first thing that's going to pop up on mix and lock is going to be pretty similar to what you see now if you book the telephone can yeah um, so it's going to be a you know practically blank panel uh, with um, yeah just just telling you if it's rewinding or not yeah and if it's recording or not and that's yeah. it I think yeah we wanted to do it like just ship the unit in what we call simple mode so it'll just have recording and it'll just have one the fixed tape speed fixed bias everything's fixed and it just auto rewinds the same as the telephone can right now and then after and some then time, we um, add uh, <laughs> switching off of tape speeds, of course, but we're also looking into changing the bias dynamically and a few other things. Well, yeah, um, it's the, the most work that is left to be done is on the interface design. So we have to decide which features to expose and which not. Yeah. But um, practically everything that you would find on a tape plugin um, can be well yeah you, tape you cannot formulations, <laughs> yeah, but you cannot change else, tape yeah. formulations you cannot make it uh more quiet although those machines are incredibly quiet um but the point is uh the um equalization uh so the record and reproduce equalization is exposed via the serial interface so it's going to be available uh, the bias settings are exposed via serial interface, so it's going to be available. Uh, tape speeds are going to be available for tweaking via the, the, the user interface. Uh, but it will take a bit more work to um, do a you know, nice graphics with um, yeah, and all the logic, logic to, yeah. to switch that. And yeah, so that's why I'm saying we'll, we'll just do the, uh, um, as Donnie is asking which one it is, it's the Studer A. 812 i believe yeah it's 812 mark one yeah so it's going to be that machine and the tape we're using is the recording the masters you'll know yeah recording the masters lpr 35 which is also the one loaded now into the telefunken which mm -hmm. is also i think new from the last uh it's a week old or something last update yeah 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 mm -hmm. so there's new tape on the telefunken uh we've also increased our schedule uh, uh schedule maintenance schedule mm -hmm. of, of the telephone can, so we clean heads twice a week um yeah so actually i noticed that with using the new uh recording the master's tape mm -hmm. um the problem with the the oxide um, peel-offs sticking to the head got a bit better or it's it's not sticking to the head as much because right. before we were using the bass lubricated tape which is um, the broadcast standard um, with the same formulation than the alpr 35 but with some additional layers so um, it should be um, taking the rewinding more um, efficiently and uh, do less damage to the heads and stuff like that um, but since the this broadcast formulation of tape is not readily available from the yeah we use new old stock yeah. stuff on there so I think it's not only f you know formulation and uh, maybe um, like uh, layering but it's also age mm. so it might be just that it was too old yeah but anyway we switched the tape manufacturer now and now we're using new tape newly manufactured tape and uh, this is better in terms of uh, stability uh, of, of you know how, how long we can count on the telephone can not to give us grief yeah and it, it it's 
um, the chance of you getting a piece of um, piece of dust or oxide stuck on the head while bouncing or while listening to the tape is much lower now because the, the tape is behaving much better. Um, so yeah, thumbs up for new tapes. <laughs> yeah, and so far, what I've heard at least, there's you know, it sounds great. There's uh, yeah, nothing to amazing. miss uh, from the old tape, at least, you know. Mm -hmm. I haven't heard anything um, bad from the new ones. So anyway, um, that's about the Studer. Do we have anything else to say about the Studer? Hi, Elvis. Uh, let me go. No, I think that's it. Um, okay. that, that's, that, that's the state of, of the matter at the moment. Um, uh, do you have um, the graphics of the of the new gear or maybe of tape? It should be somewhere on my computer, but let me just, I'll take a minute and try to ready it. Yeah, sticky. I mean, um, yeah, shading is a, is a problem. And uh, uh, we're happy now that this one seems to exhibit very small amounts of that. Uh, very manageable ones at least so twice twice a week cleaning it up thoroughly um, seems seems to be quite quite okay much better than before at least so Giga is looking for some uh, gooey pictures we should have prepared it before time so sorry about that but um, yeah that now now it's a wonderful time for questions if you have any yeah sure bring it up I mean there was some insinuation that I haven't changed my shirt. I have four of these. <laughs> the funny thing is uh, you get this if you do something for the community around here um, because we have a, a startup community here. I think it's about 70 people, something like that. And uh, if you do something that benefits the whole, the whole, then you get one of these. <laughs> so that's the story behind why I have so many of those and you see me uh, with them all the time. Fun fact. Um, <laughs> so, uh, let me open this preview. All right. Okay, okay, here we go. Yeah. So, let's see if we can route this to All right. the... So, yep, that's the, that's the intermediary. Is it showing? Yeah, it is. Oh, yeah, it will uh, just take some time yeah. uh, for it to reach YouTube. Okay. I think we should adjust the um, streaming settings at some point. But I think it okay. might be just the YouTube buffering. Yeah, exactly, um, the, the YouTube buffering. I think you can set it to something faster. Oh, but okay. that's okay. Maybe uh, for the next webinar yeah. for 15th. Um, so, yeah, this is going to be the, the GUI for, for the time being before we uh, develop a completely custom yeah. Um, interface with all the functions exposed and mapped to knobs. And, um, yeah. So yeah. this is just the basic one. This is what you'll see. Instead of the Telefunken one, where you select the Studer one, and it only has record and winding indicators, and that's it. Mm. And maybe we will be able to uh, squeeze the um, tape position on the LCD on the left. Yeah. And that would be probably it for the basic stuff. Then in the next version, we'd add bias and uh, speed and uh, other stuff. Mm. Yeah. I was thinking about at least a couple of presets for the high and low EQ settings for um, record and reprodu record and reproduction. Um, so you can get different amounts of saturation or on lows and highs. Um, either that or, you know, just map it to a knob. So <laughs> you have complete control of the EQ. Uh, so I think it's going to be quite fun. Uh, <laughs> Jakob uh, Erland has joined yeah. us. Hello. Um, we hope to see you again in person. Thank you so much for dropping by. Um, <laughs> he has a question. Uh, because there's an edit block on the, on the GUI, will he be able to do um, digital edits? God, no. No, we won't let you do that. We already kind of shortened one of our tapes because <laughs> one of our coworkers was really, you know, keen on finding out what the red button does because the, the button on our own machine is uh, red or reddish. 
Uh, and so it's basically it's like the Dexter's laboratory. Like, what does the red button do? And click, and, and then yeah. the tape just goes in half, <laughs> and then we're all very, very sad. <laughs> Fortunately, it only happened once and it wasn't exactly at half. It was somewhere in the beginning. So there was no, like, a lot. There no was no tears, of, but yeah. yeah, still. And um, moving on. Moving on. So enough about yeah. tape for now. You'll hear about it more when we officially release it. Hopefully, mm -hmm. what, two weeks? Yeah, I sincerely hope that we, we fix the last stuff. And yeah, let's be optimistic and yeah. say two weeks or less. Yeah. Um, and the next thing we promised to talk about is yeah. the ADU, the ADU or audio destruction unit. And oh, I have to click on the actual preview. On the actual preview, yeah, that helps. There you go. There we go. And this one's with a lot of perspective, or yeah, that. Ooh, sorry. Yeah, and that's better. So yeah, it's um, the graphics started um, progressing nicely. Yeah, um, because the guys um, from the other company that are doing our graphics um, came back from vacations. Yay! End of vacation. Um, so mm. stuff is happening again, Fine. and look at that beauty. I mean, um, so yeah, this is the audio destruction unit or a. Uh, something between a uh, culture vulture and a uh, black box HG2. Mm -hmm. So it's a um, red 47 preamp tube preamp uh, combined with a 6AS6, I believe, um, pentode uh, distortion stage. Actually, yeah, it's a tube overdrive circuit with um, filters in the in the stage that pushes the audio into overdrive yeah um, and um, it's gonna be available out of the box or at first um, introduction onto the system in uh, parallel mode so it's gonna be you're gonna be able to um, do parallel processing on this one because after initial testing of this unit uh, we found out that um, it makes the the most sense to drive it in parallel um so yeah it's a really really versatile drive unit it's, uh, uh, yeah it's interesting it says audio destruction unit but actually it can be when in parallel it can be really gentle it can be something really useful for getting uh, uh some you know mastering st style saturation done mm. so but but you can also use it in a fully wet uh, guitar amp distortion mode and the HPF the the um, high pass filter which I think should actually be a low pass filter I think mm. so maybe we'll have yeah to, I think it's an it LPF. might be yeah it might have been mislabeled <laughs> on, on the original unit as well cool about finding this out on a webinar <laughs> <laughs> why not that's what yeah. you know presentations that's what they're for um, so yeah, it, it, the idea here is just to cut off all the annoying um, high frequency fizz. So it's uh, not really a cabinet simulation, but you know, mm. could be useful, especially on bass. Uh, Boyan, raise your hand for the people who know. Hello, uh, hello to, to I, know I'm Boyan. Boyan. Hi. <laughs> uh, so I yeah, made he, this company some he, time ago. <laughs> and he's the guy who handles uh, the vast majority of uh, support chat. So if you, yeah. if, you um, if you click support, you'll get one of us, but yeah. mostly me. Mostly, yeah. Um, so while we have at least a couple of you guys uh, watching uh, this webinar, um, I would like to ask if you share with us your preference for color. Yeah. Because why not? Tell us. Um, we wanted to go for some kind of you know uh, colorful GUI because most of the units are black or yeah. blackish. We have so many dark black units, and it's getting a bit gloomy. So I wanted a unit that would be bold and colorful and, you know, not be black. <laughs> yeah, because it definitely sounds very colorful. So the, so the maybe interface, yeah, the connection should, is there. Yeah. yeah should so, reflect that. So you guys let us know if you would like yellow or orange or if you'd like something else. I think we've had quite a few very freaky um, um, options as yeah. well somewhere, but... I don't know how easy it is to put that up right now. 
Yeah, I was I was thinking about a purple box, but then the ah, this, I like purple. Yeah, but um, I think a week ago this um, purple seventy seven. I think it's it's um, purple audio's eleven seventy six. Yeah. remake um, mm -hmm. came out as um, plugin alliance plugin. Um, That's fine. I mean, there's all the politics are blue and so what. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I don't know. It's just they don't own yeah. the color. I mean, okay, they're one of the guys with the violet boxes, but still, yeah. it, it could be fun. It's it's kind of. I, a I'm still rooting for for violet. It would be cool. <laughs> um, yeah, but regarding <laughs> audio color. Um, I'd say it, it very much depends on the settings. Um, out of those that are available um, on the GUI, uh, the triode, I think it's the warmest one. Yeah, um, it's definitely the least fizzy, least yeah. aggressive one. It's, it's nice. Very um, cool. And then the pentodes get progressively not harsher just a more high frequency well, the difference between the first yeah. two is really pronounced and yeah. then the other ones are peaking filters with pentode mode so mm. i find these four modes peak one through peak four very useful on drums and bass guitar distortion but on guitar i'm sorry on drums it can really uh, push out a snare or stuff like that it's really cool mm. um, it can get really nice distorted drum sounds you know for for breaks and stuff with this uh, unit so will be very useful i think yeah it's kind of at least from my experience when i was playing with it before we decided to put it on um it's kind of the the you know the fast dirty compressor that you want to put on you know heavy drum room sounds or something like that to to really you know um squeeze the life out of some track and just make it chaotic and alive and all that um, sometimes you have to really be careful with the compressor or push it just in a certain way to make it saturate or it seems that you have to put much more work in making a compressor do that um, than just going straight for this kind of processor because mm -hmm every clipping or saturating unit is actually a compressor with no attack and release settings yeah just um, square wave rectification so it's basically um it's a kind of a compressor but also a clipper um, that's frequency dependent in one box but if you're talking about compression then you should also be talking about the bias knob i yeah. think because that's that's where uh, for me the difference gets blurred or kind of if you have a, I don't know, if you're used to something like a stump box distortion or a guitar mm -hmm. amp distortion, the bias knob is not there, obviously. So that's new. And um, tweaking the bias knob and not going uh, very aggressively on the drive, you can really get some compression actually going on. It sounds at least like compression. It breathes with the level of audio. It's not like just distortion it's more like compression to me at least yeah yeah um well from from my findings when i was um <laughs> checking out what what actually happens uh, when you crank this box and change the bias and everything uh the bias changes the nature of uh peak clipping so yeah. it's either um you, you can really fine tune it to be as symmetric as possible so the distortion will be very um, pleasant, a lot of uh, low order harmonics, um, so it's it sounds kind of like compression, but actually it's just very um, friendly type of saturation. Um, and then with uh, bias settings far from symmetric, you get a very asymmetric clipping that usually sounds more aggressive. Um, yeah. So yeah, that's that's what the bias knob is for on that box. Yeah. Also, I mean, lays off on the distortion on some points at least. To me, then it just sounds less like distortion, but that just might be my ears. Yeah. Um, and for the question about the output level knob on the Fairchild, actually, you can use the wet knob 
on the dry yeah. wet section um, to accomplish that. Because yep. the, the, region, the original unit didn't have an output, neither gain stage or attenuator, uh, so our unit doesn't either. Uh, but if you feel that the Fairchild is putting out too much level and you want to lower the level before hitting the next box, which is the AD. Yeah, sure. Oh, it's it's a single. Yeah, it's a, sing yeah, it's single, a single product, single product, now. Um, product right now. So yeah, if you're if you are close to clipping point on the AD converter, just um, use the. I think it's the right of the two little knobs. Uh, in I the toolbar so. above the... I think it's written next to them anyway. Yeah. So uh, not the dry, which is the first one, I believe, and the, the next one should be wet. Mm. You can just lay that down and it's an analog uh, gain stage before AD. So that should be your output level control. It's a bit hidden, but um, if you need it, it's there. Um, and for Donnie's question about um, destroying the snare drum, um, I think this unit would be a great unit to destroy a snare drum, but if you're working on a project right now, I don't know how, how much time you have to, to wait for it to become available. Yeah, the ADU is graphics are very far, far now, so it's not that much more on that, but um, the actual hardware unit has been disassembled into tiny, tiny pieces because we want to do it again a bit more professionally. Um, I've done it for the first time some years back, so it's a bit of a mess. And um, Elvis over there um, decided to make it right. So it's going to take a few weeks, I think, to make it right. Yeah, but I think it's worth it because... Oh, definitely. Um, no, no, we want to make it right. Yeah. So patience, but uh, soon. Yeah, but while you wait for that, uh, you can try your hand with the oh, batch maker. Steve. Um, because the batter maker has the clipping circuit on it. Um, so if you go into the clipping mode and you push the clipper value um, to 100%, then uh, it's going to be only the clipping circuit. Plus, you can twiddle around with the, the, the harmonics generator stuff. Mm. Um, so it can be either that or the, the fat limiter. Uh, in rack one can also be persuaded to oh yes that one can distort yeah. very uh, aggressively if you let it mm. so yeah quite a few options to already get saturation slash distortion on uh, mix analog right now but um, and a, tape, a dedicated box is all that mm. nicer and uh, has options just to do that mm. so that's gonna be cool and um, yeah, Steve, that's actually a Studer A812. That's uh, the next machine we're going to put out. Yeah. Um, first off, it's just going to be the simple version where you just uh, have the same as in the Telefunken. You just have an indicator for whether or not it's recording and whether or not it's rewinding. Hopefully, we'll squeeze a tape position indicator there as well. But um, we've discussed this before with the rest of the crew here. Uh, the next step for that is to add a um, speed selector and a bias selector. Uh, maybe more features we'll see. Um, hopefully this will be the next machine to hit uh, Mix Analog in about two weeks, we hope. Alright. And I think gear-wise... Gear-wise, I think we're done. Yeah. I mean, at least for the like very, very, very soon f future. We've mm -hmm. still got the G24 to do. Um, and... Uh, some more units from Elysia and uh, Better Maker that we will get at some point. At least uh, the Better Maker one would be easy to integrate because mm. it's already automated. So there will be more gear on Mix Analog in the very soon future that we've discussed, but also in the like in the next uh, few months, we already have our work cut out for us. <laughs> There's a lot of gear coming and uh, can't wait to put it all on. Mm. Um, so moving from hardware to stuff that we've been talking now for so quite some time but it's finally getting around to it it's um we've got a an old server currently running mix analog and that's all fine and dandy but uh it's showing its age so we want to we want to move to a, a new cluster that we made especially for mix analog it's uh, a lot more powerful five machines 
Um, and the, yeah, the main like uh, enhancement for you guys would be the, that mix analog would load faster, it would be snappier, but uh, especially there should be less errors, there should be less dropouts. So can't wait to do that. We've been putting it off and on for weeks now because there's always been some sort of emergency to go through, but uh, finally we've blocked out some time next week. So um, hopefully the next weekend is going to be uh, a swap time where we'll be swapping from the old server to, to the new cluster. The new cluster is also connected to a new network and that network is about a hundred times faster. So uh, that's not a joke, it's actually a hundred times faster uh, based on, um, funnily enough, not on the ISPs, like, uh, what should we say, specs. On specs, it's the same, like it's one gigabit line, but we're actually getting a gigabit on the new uh, cluster, whereas on the old one, we're only getting 1% of that <laughs> per, per user, but now it should be uh, much better. So your uploads are going to upload much faster. Um, and yeah, hopefully there will be less problems with Mix Analog mm. on the new cluster. Let's hope. <laughs> and uh, we, are, we may be moving to new premises. Yes. Um, next month. As you can sometime. see, this is a small office for four or five people. So, and there's so much gear with us. Uh, but also one of the like, key problems is that uh, the gear is um, not so easy to get to. So mm. when we want to fix things, it's always very tight. It's always, um, it takes extra time. So uh, we want to make something more, we want to take more space. We want to give gear more space so that we mm. can move around it more freely and uh, get to the cables, get to the IO ports and so on. Yeah, to fix things and faster, and yeah. And we also want to make something like a, uh, a wall of, of gear that we have, automated and non-automated, so that hopefully, that's the theory right now, but hopefully we'll be able to get a video camera to point to that so that you guys can watch Mix Analog in action. <laughs> we'll see. Um, and to just to answer Donnie, um, yeah, of course, it is actually encouraged uh, to upload your files before your session starts, so you save your time. Um, that you booked. Yeah, so wave files you're... are huge. They take a long time to upload sometimes. So if you have been, if you've reserved 15 minutes of something and then you spend 10 minutes of that uploading, then you won't be happy. And mm. That's just not cool. So just do it in, do it before. Um, will we have a downtime? Certainly. Uh, we will announce it though. So when we're 100% sure that we're ready to move, we will tell you uh, and actually there will be so there's two instances of moving there's one where we will just leave all the gear where it is everything stays where it is the new servers are actually right on top of the old one so it's just the software stuff and a, and a few network cables so hopefully that one will take a small part of a day during the next weekend so Sunday, Saturday, something like that. Maybe half of a day where we will be out. Um, that's at least my plan. Hopefully, you know, six hours upper bound, mm -hmm. something like that. And uh, for for the move after that, uh, we're, when we move to the new uh, to the new room, um, that's probably going to be a longer one, probably a whole day. Yeah. Or or maybe least, even a whole weekend. Yeah. Well, we move everything, and we want to do. We want to reorganize the cables. We want to. Um, we'll have to move a lot of stuff, a mm -hmm. lot of gear. So that's probably going to be a whole weekend when we'll be offline. Um, but we'll also announce that and it's not going to happen. I, I believe at, at least until, yeah, somewhere around first half of August, something like that. I mean, yes, yeah, soonest, uh, after I'd the say first half of August, I believe. second half of August, yeah. I think it's realistic for, I for, think so for the big move. Mm -hmm. But we hope to make a short one first. Yeah. Move all the software stuff to the new servers, and then away we go. And um, did we exhaust all the, the theme for today? Maybe so. If there are any questions, we'd love to answer them. Mm -hmm. um, Third than that, yeah. There's one more thing that uh, I've been doing now, in uh, you know, because 
mix analog as it is right now, it's mostly a mastering sort of thing, mastering and coloring. So you put on a track, you color it with tape, for example, or, or you master it after it's been mixed. But you know, the common thing between these two operations is you've got one track. It may be a stereo track, but it's just one track. So I've been exploring now different ways um, how to extend mix analog to uh, make it support more than one track at the same time. Um, so I'll be prototyping that in the next few weeks. Of course, first we'll do um, the small software move and stuff like that. But um, I've been, let's say, cautiously optimistic about uh, this actually taking less time than we've thought before. So it might actually arrive to mix analog sooner than we expected. So uh, that would give you guys the ability to upload, for example, back uh, more than one track and play those at the same time. Maybe process just one of those. So for example, you'd have uh, a whole rhythm section, but you'd only be processing uh, the bass guitar or something. Mm. And then you'd stop processing the bass uh, guitar. You've done that, you've bounced that, and then you'd move to some other instrument. So it could actually be mix analog. You could actually do some mixing on, on that. So I've been doing some uh, research into that. Seems very nice. Oh, what I've found so far, very, um, yeah. It's look, it looks promising. It, it's looking good. Yeah, it's yeah. looking good. I think it will take less time than when I thought, I mm -hmm. thought it would take initially. And that, in, in some manner, answers uh, Jakob's question about what sort of hardware would we wish for in the maybe far future. Oh. Um, at least for me, the, the biggest... Um, I'm anticipating the, the summing mixer the most. I, I cannot wait to hear that. Um, and I think it's going to be the... I don't know, the, the, uh, the most... One of the most interesting um, boxes up here because um, even though the summing mixers do make subtle differences, uh, with all the different uh, bus amps and the uh, possibility of hardware inserts and thus avoiding um, additional conversions while processing your stereo buses, um, all that combined amounts to a very, very powerful system. Um, and I cannot wait to try that out. Well, and apart from that, I'm, I'm really wishing to get uh, our hands on a multiband compressor sometime. This is cool because we have very different wishes. Cool. <laughs> I'm uh, I'm looking for an EMT 140. Uh, I'm looking for a nice big reverb that sounds, you know, real. I want something like that. So that's something I'd like to put on a a um, nice plate and maybe a nice spring reverb. Ooh, so yeah. those those would be like my. You know, because currently we have no effects. We've got compression, we've got EQ, we've got saturation already, mm. limiting, you know, you name it, but no effects. And you know, audio can be a bit boring without effects. So, you know, that's just me. But, you know, also maybe um, to dream even bigger than uh, what we were talking about now, when I was, when I started this company, well, seven years ago, one of my dreams was to take an SSL 4K and put it first to automate it. The, the internet idea came later, but I'd really like to um, see if we can push so far with the technology and, uh, and the business side of things where at some point you could log in and get an SSL 4K in the cloud. I mean, how about that? With all the dynamics, all of the routing, everything accessible, just an SSL 4K, yeah. Immaculately maintained, everything works. I would vote for a Neve Genesis because it's already automated. <laughs> <laughs> you know, modern guy. Yeah, let's let's see what what future holds. Both are nice British consoles. Yeah. Um, and yeah, thanks thanks Jakob for for working on it. <laughs> thanks. Um, Talking about, yeah, it's interesting that you brought up a chamber. Uh, we've, we've been in contact with a guy. I think we should poke him again uh, because it was such a cool idea. It's, um, it's a shame that it uh, died somewhere in 
at some point. Mm. But uh, the idea was to take a chamber and then put in variable acoustics. So um, that would be an ac acoustic panels that can be either absorptive or reflective. And the amount of reflection and absorption can be modified as well as the crossover frequency of, of those two acoustical properties. So uh, combine that with a uh, like automated speaker that you can move in the room and an automated microphone set that you can also move in the room. So that would kind of make it possible to get real reverb of a real room, but you could really, really mold it acoustically. So before it even hits the mic for microphones in the AD. So that was his idea um, from a guy uh, in Denmark, I yeah, believe. Golam, Golam something. Yeah. I, I can't remember. He's got a cool name. startup doing uh, variable acoustics, mm -hmm. uh, variable configurable, real time changeable acoustics. Um, very interesting stuff. We should we should poke him again and see if he's yeah. so serious about it because I'd love to do it. Um, actually, the, the biggest problem with those kind of reverbs is that um, real estate is much more expensive than all your gear. Um, and even all your gear can be expensive, but um, renting a place and just using the, the, all the volume that you need for a proper chamber just for reverb or buying a, a, you know some real estate to have a, a reverb in it uh, is quite a huge financial undertaking undertaking but it's cool yeah it <laughs> <laughs> i'm sorry guys i mean it's uh... <laughs> well yeah we're, we're we're having the you know gear slot banter now so why not yeah why not <laughs> exactly why not i mean if it if you guys want it we'll build it um and yes, yes, we've also been talking with the local church authorities about all of the abandoned churches. There are so many of them uh, where acoustics are amazing. It's been built for uh, for music, mm. but nobody's using those places. The problem usually was getting the internet and power there because it's been disconnected ages ago. At least the power mm. stuff and the internet was never there. It's usually on the top of a hill or something. But they sound great. So it could be really cool spaces. We'll see. Hopefully we can convince mm. someone to get on board this uh, uh, acoustic uh, spaces thing, I'd really love to do it. Mm. Uh, okay, so anything else we can add? I mean, end no. uh, end on a high note, maybe, or we should just consider and have an awkward moment. That's also okay. Yeah. No, I'm thinking about gear. If there's some special box that I would really like to. Yeah, we can stop thinking uh, about gear. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, well, from from my end, if if you've got a console and you've got um, a custom reverb chamber and you know uh, a whole slew of of uh, mastering stuff and tape of different kinds. Oh, then... I know, multi-track tape, Ooh, like yeah. sixteen-channel mm. tape machine because put that in front of the SSL mine the main reason why I I love the stereotype machines that we have right now but the main reason I'm still hope that someday we're gonna be able to implement a multi-track tape machine is that uh, you can put through it um, a whole multi-track of drums separately so you can drive the snare drum much harder than you would a kick drum or vice versa or whatever cool. um, and you don't lose the um, inter-channel um, timing alignment uh, because even yeah, if because if it slows down or if it yeah it, you'll get the same yeah. wow on all the channels at the same time which is great yeah, yeah that's cool um, Still so phase. yeah that's 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 one of my wishes um, other than that, there's, there have now been quite a few oh, suggestions, okay. so cool. we can discuss them. Um, a space echo, echoplex, bucket brigade delays. We've got, we've got it. Do we have anything like that? I don't think we do. No. But what, so um, the background to this answer is there's a lot of gear behind me well, here, here, yeah, and and even more that you can see uh, that's um, on the floor. So there's a lot of gear that we have that we don't put online because. Putting it online costs quite a lot of time and money right now. 
but uh, also ADDA channels and so on. So, you know, uh, there was a, um, there was a there was a question about the Altec limiter. We have to. Um, we just haven't automated them and put them on. Um, they've been modded to RS RS one to four spec. If you know about those, it's, it was used on the Beatles albums, I believe. <laughs> so they the story I think goes that they sent someone to the U.S. to figure out why RCA and and these um, um, guys were getting such a cool sound because they were using ribbon mics and so on at the mm -hmm. at the time. So it wasn't really making sense to the Brits why you know how are they getting this full nice big sound and the guy um, you know from UK uh, got to the USA got a recording session in and they were using these boxes uh, which were used for PA purposes before and they were compressors um, so he brought them back home and to was it BBC or was it someone else not really sure no it wasn't BBC it would be Abbey Road I guess yeah I think it was yeah, I think EMI. It would be EMI exactly it would be EMI mm -hmm. and uh, and they've you know looked at these boxes and yeah okay we get the idea but it's built so badly <laughs> it's, it's really crap can we do it you know can we modify it and they did and it's so it's a um, they modified the the original pa so uh, for live use compressors and uh, changed them around a bit internally reducing the distortion changing a bit uh, um, the way it compresses and uh, i've actually wired two of them to these kind of mods so we've got two of those Maybe we'd put them online if there's interest. Um, yeah, other I than that, we we think I I think we missed a um, question about um, oh Jakob's question. Yeah. Will we be putting out hardware at some point to automate your own gear? It's a great question. We've actually started um, before we did the internet thing. We were trying to peddle our own upgrade kits for people to upgrade their Poltex and 1176s and LA2As and so on to get automation just to work with their own computer. Makes sense, you know, if you have a busy studio and uh, you want the convenience of re total instant recall um, and you want to stay in the sweet spot all the time, you don't want to go down somewhere and tweak that hardware box, come back and then it sounds different and then have to repeat that again. Um, Unfortunately, we were very unsuccessful with that, so mm. we just didn't do it after that anymore. Uh, but we get these requests quite often, so well, we, I think we, at some we point do we have get, to take it seriously. Yeah, we, we do get requests, but usually in those requests kind of vanish into thin air when we you know, an <laughs> announce how much does it actually cost to, to do all those yeah, upgrades. It's a, it's, I think it's a chicken-egg problem. Yeah. If we, had, if we knew there was enough interest, we would be able to drop the price significantly yeah, enough sure. to so maybe we should just write down you know one unit this much 10 units this much 100 yeah. units this much and if you can get 100 people then it should be like really really affordable hopefully so let's maybe put that on the backlog and do that at some point mm -hmm. as an experiment see if we find enough people yeah, interested to, to get a group order going or something yeah like that. it it would be an honor to you know have a uh, hundred studios mm. around the world uh, have automated something that mm. with our tech mm. that would be super cool um, and question from my Clorillo project um, actually I think with all the boxes that are already in in the pipeline to to including the summing mixer and in, yeah. stuff I think, well, I think the we're done for soonest that could happen is end of winter 2020 something like that mm, yeah i mean at the pace we're going at right now unless we get like really faster then the altics are probably out until february yeah something like that unfortunately mm. um hopefully um we can hire some more people and uh, get to execute faster but right now that's the speed we can work at so Hopefully that's okay, but if, you know, hopefully we'll get faster though. Mm. Um, and our personal opinion on hardware clones out there. Um, it's, I think marketing wise, it just makes so much sense. If you are, if you're in uh, like 
if you like analog gear, if you like uh, to be in a studio and so on, and you've got the knack to make these units yourself, then coming up with a new unit is a hundred times um, harder than just cloning something when you're starting out, I think. When you want to sell your first five or ten units, it's just so much easier to sell a clone right now. Yeah, but I think his, uh, considering the, you know, the Clark Technic, the Worm Audio, the, um, who, who else okay. is that's, Stan? That's another can of worms, though, yeah. yeah. I was thinking from like a perspective of a new small manufacturer, yeah. But uh, yeah, the big guys are also doing it now. And I think it's... From my experience, or for our experience, from doing marketing for our own platform, um, I think it's just the the buzzword thing. Um, you know, if you put out something that has an 1176 written on it, uh, you have a... Even if you're a sixth clone that probably doesn't sound as good as the original, but nobody cares. Uh, but it's going to still be much easier to sell that than, you know, coming up with a completely new design that nobody's ever heard of um, and, you know, yeah, trying to that's, that's what I said. to pedal it from, from <laughs> ground up. Yeah, but it's, it's from a manufacturer perspective, not from... Sure. I mean, yeah, that's, that's true. Uh, the marketing effort, regardless of whether you're small or large, is going to be very different if you're going to be uh, peddling something that's... Uh, been in every magazine, on every producer's, uh, I don't know, short list of gear he uses, on, on every uh, second vintage album that's really left its mark on history, uh, set list, mm -hmm. and so on. So it's just easier, I guess. And yeah. People like easy. But if, if you want um, maybe a, a, an opinion from someone who's... Uh, who went through all the tr trouble. We have Jakob Erland in, in the comment section. He <laughs> did the opposite. <laughs> he came up with ludicrously interesting things. Uh, yeah. There are no clones of anything, just his original stuff. So, you know, kudos to those people who pushed the envelope. And he's got a tech nomination this year. So, you know, yeah. we're voting. We will definitely <laughs> are. I, uh, you can vote for those, right? I think you can. Yeah. I, know I, I think I remember I, you can I, vote I for those. I know we've done the, the pre-selection thing. Yeah. So. Um, 10, 10, 10. Anything else we can do? Um, I, don't, I don't believe we could... Um, I, I would dare to dabble in price estimations for, <laughs> for upgrade kits at the moment. Um, well, um, actually, they they can hear pretty good stuff on, on mix analog now, so <laughs> you know. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's out. true. Yeah, yeah. If <laughs> if if you've got kids that uh, think that just if it's you know um, if it says eleven seventy six on it, mm. then it's bound to sound like the real deal. You can send them our way. Our eleven seventy six is free to use, and I don't think we we've actually said on the webinar yet that we've done significant improvements to it in the past few weeks um, so now it's up to spec yeah it, it's really it's I was, really I was misled by someone in my um, previous years about the equivalence of some transistors and it turns out they're not that much equivalent uh, so we uh, Elvis has done a wonderful job of mm. uh, fixing those things and now it sounds amazing, even better, than, much better than before. And uh, Giga has lowered the ripple on the on the power supply, so it's less noisy. Mm -hmm. So it's a, it's a good unit to go and check out, and it's free. And actually, I've done a really short and dirty comparison of 1176s. Exactly, yes. Um, yeah. Just a week ago, I guess. <laughs> um, that's on our YouTube channel. Um, and I've been comparing the uh, slate emulation, the waves emulation, the mix analog one, and a, the first channel of my 1178 from the studio, uh, which is not a revision A that some people um, 
put out uh, on the YouTube that you're you're comparing, you know, um, you're not comparing apples to apples and stuff like that. Um, and I know that that's the case, but that was one uh, vintage original Ure unit that I had at hand. Um, so, you know, I just compared the tools that were at my disposal to find out which one sounds in what manner. Um, and I, you know, wanted to share the results with you. So, um, yep. yeah, it's not a competition. It's just, you know, information. It's on this very same YouTube channel. So, you know, and it's got a link to, I think some HD, I mean, HD, like mm -hmm. lossless files that you can load up in your DAW and compare for yourself. Yeah. Regarding uh, Pop Politeis uh, question, yes, Mr. Policeman, we do not, <laughs> we do not actually have a vintage UA, but when you compare it to the uh, Clark Technic unit differences, they're pretty significantly. <laughs> so, uh, same goes for our politics and the warm stuff. Mm -hmm. So yeah, they're not originals. That's true, but they are very well executed clones. So, um, and over the years we've um, done a lot of comparisons and coaxing and, and fixing stuff and replacing stuff and uh, yeah just doing a lot of component selection after the build also <laughs> just to make sure that this is yeah. something that sounds good so you're right it's probably not exactly the same as a vintage unit those are probably um, quite different one from the other as well um, but compared to the uh, these really cheap knockoffs coming out right now, I think it's a it's a big gap. <laughs> okay, um, so I think we can. Yeah, if um, there's no more questions. Yeah, um, you guys have been great. We usually don't get so many questions, mm -hmm. so thank you so much for uh, giving us something to talk about. Um, it's been great. So uh, we have these webinars every two weeks mm. and uh, hopefully next time I will be talking about how our new servers are really great and everything is working fine. Yeah, and <laughs> I, we hope that this machine will be, you know, churning away. Yes, uh, or very near so yeah. at least. So yeah, see you in two weeks. Uh, thank you so much for joining and see you later. Yeah. Bye bye. bye.